In this video, I want to talk about Bender's decomposition technique. And let's straightly start it. Here's my problem C1x and C, uh, plus C2y. I have a few constraints. And the problem is this x belongs to z. And it should be integer, and it makes the problem complicated. The trick with the Bender's decomposition is that I'm going to uh, create two different problems as you can see here one of them is main problem I'm gonna call the other one sub problem I'm gonna put the complicated variable in one of them and I'm gonna put the you know the other variable which is easier to solve in the sub problem uh, I'm not gonna explain uh, too much details around this Bender's decomposition technique because the concentration of this video is how to apply Bender's decomposition into Julia programming language. Let's take a look to this example. In this example, we have uh, uh, we have this objective function. We have two different constraints, and let me fix this. Uh, we have x and y that should be greater than zero plus y should be in z or oh, x should be in z and x should be in z so what i'm doing is i'm, I'm um, creating two different problems one of them is this guy over here uh, for the sake of simplification i didn't include any constraints in the main problem and the sub problem is this guy it's a very easy uh, it's a very easy problem also, just to uh, clarify, this feet up represents the second down. It's kind of the uh, it represents the second the, the second problem or the sub problem. It's kind of a bound on it. Okay. And these are the list of my constraints. I have c1, c2, uh, which is the coefficient of the objective function of the first problem, the coefficient of objective function of the second guy and coefficient of the constraints and right hand side of the second problem so let's start writing let's start modeling the for the main problem uh, let me add one of them and uh, let's make it mark down so this is modeling modeling the main problem What I'm going to do is I'm going to develop a model for the main problem, but I'm not going to solve it. So I'm going to call it main. And uh, main is a model with the GLPK. The, did I load the slide? So it's also a good practice to uh, include all of the packages that we are going to use. I'm going to use jump. Everybody use jump in Julia for the optimization. And this GLP, GLPK package which is a pretty cool package uh, and it's free solver. Coming here, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to develop a model. I'm going to call it main and uh, my optimizer is GLPK. In addition to the model, uh, I need to define the variables the variables inside the main model I have the variable of X I got two of them and they should be greater or equal to zero and the other point is they are integer and that's why I'm calling them complicating variable I also should define the objective belongs to main the sense is minimization c transpose c1 transpose x plus theta gonna give me the objective i forgot to define the theta that's fine i can define it now main uh, theta and the other point is uh, because it's a minimization, the theta can go to minus infinity. It's appropriate to consider a lower bound for theta. 
let's say in this case the lower bound is minus 1000 that's good let's keep it going and finally uh, I'm done I'm done I can print the model and take a look uh, print the main just to make sure yeah everything looks good everything is fine uh, I'm gonna get rid of this printing because I'm gonna keep my uh, keep my notebook clean after modeling the main problem it's time to model the sub problem modeling uh, the sub problem and the difference here is uh, this is something maybe I wanna take a note of I will define or let's say I will I will model the sub problem inside a function but here I didn't model the main problem inside the function you're gonna see why so I'm defining a function inside the studio and uh, what shall I call my function I want to call my function sub and this sub takes one argument that argument is uh, x and yeah. what is this x because you know in uh, if you know the principles of Benz's decomposition uh, the values of uh, you know at first I solve the main problem then I get the values of the x then I'm gonna insert the x here and get the value of the y by assuming I know how much is the x so I need a, I need to define a, a model the model I'm gonna call my model sub sub is a model with glpk of the miser this model sub needs to have variables. The variable belongs to sub. It is, it should be more than or equal to zero. It's called y. And I have two y's. And I should have objective function. Objective function belonging to the sub. The sense of the objective is minimization. And I can define it as C transpose Y. What else? It's time to get the constraints. And the constraints belong to the sub model. And A1, which is the coefficient of, I define A1 and A2 here. A1 is the coefficient of the X's. A2 is the coefficient of the Y's. A1 times X plus a2 times y should be less than or equal to b2 which is the right hand side and so the y is the variable the x will be uh, obtained from the previous stage and uh, and, and that's it i'm gonna have the uh, i can optimize optimize my sub problem forget the exclamation mark and uh, I need a few different stuff the first thing I need is the objective function objective value of this sub -mother. and I'm gonna call it O then I need to know y equals to values. I want to, you know, I want to get the values of the variables, value of the y. I'm going to call it y. Then I need to know the uh, the simplex multiplier uh, denoted by, I usually denote it by lambda. So first of all, to get the uh, the simplex multiplier, first of all, I'm going to call all of the constraints. This is a function in in uh, in in Julia. I'm going to call all of the constraints from which model? From the sub. What kind of constraints are they? Have expressions and they are less than constraints. You see, you know, this guy, this is less than. Less than constraints, less than what? 
less than a number denoted by float 64. I can store all of the constraint in a variable called all cons or all con. I guess all con is better. And after that, I can get a dual from the variable all con. Like this. And store it in a variable called lambda. And that's it. It's going to solve the model and it's going to give me whatever I need. Just to make it a bit simpler for me, this is the way I work. I'm going to define a dictionary. And in this dictionary, what I'm going to do is I'm going to allocate y to the value of the variables. Then what I'm going to do is uh, the second key would be, or first, let's have objective function, O and O. Then I'm going to allocate y to the variable values. Then what I'm going to do is lambda would be allocated to lambda. And that's it. Just just for trying it, let's let's see what's going to happen if I, my x is x1 is equal to 0 x2 is equal to 0. I'm just going to try to like if, if everything is fine with uh, the function I just defined, yes or no. Yes, I see, you know, he's giving me the lambda, he's giving me the y, and he's giving me the objective function. I'm happy with this result. Uh, I just, you know, I just printed, put some uh, a function here, I don't want to explain it too much, I don't want to explain it because this video is related to Bender decomposition, not to the printing function, but we can just copy and paste it. And for uh, running this, that function, I need a package which is called uh, printf. Okay, let's come back here. Now I have, you know, I have uh, I have my uh, my main problem. I have my sub problem. Now I can define an iteration to uh, to to solve this problem. Let's take a look to this example. For example, let's say four uh, k in one to ten. Let's say I'm gonna have like ten different iterations and. Uh, we have to do a number of steps. Let me explain these steps. I guess this is better if I can explain these steps in a in a markdown first, then go and write the you know the uh, the code. So we can remember that we were talking about uh, this. We were saying c1 x this is the objective function c1 x plus c2 y is the objective function of uh, the original problem this is the objective function of the original problem and i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna you know, I'm going to break my objective function. I'm going to have a main problem. I'm going to have a sub problem. And uh, the other important issue here is, you know, having some sort of understanding about the lower bounds and upper bounds. Let's say uh, I just, I have a, I have a, I have a X, I have a given X, and I'm going to call that X, XK, right? For one of the iterations, let me call this guy XK. And let's say this xk times the coefficients of the first stage plus theta. This is my lower bound. So basically, the objective function, uh, basically the objective function of the of the it's not working. Xk. Okay, 
I don't know why it, why it doesn't work like this, but right. that's fine. Let's just call it XK. Uh, yeah. Uh, the objective function of the first state is the lower bound, and the uh, and this is the this is the upper bound. So the upper bound is C1 X K plus C2 Y Y K. This is the upper bound. So what I have here is, you know, uh, I developed, I, I get the xk from the main problem. And when I put that xk in the sub problem, I'm going to get a y, right? I'm going to call that y cross pounding to that xk, yk. So this is how I'm going to deal with the uh, lower bounds and upper bounds. And uh, it's appropriate to have some sort of optimality, uh, of optimality gap and compare it with our existing gap. So let's start working with that. What I'm going to do is, uh, first, I'm going to ask him to solve the main problem. When he solved the main problem, he can, uh, he can give me the objective function for the uh, main problem. And the objective function of the main problem is the lower bound. I'm going to call the lower bound LB and objective function of, no, sorry, objective value of main problem would be my lower bound. xk from the iteration k would be value of the variable x. Why do I need it? Because if I want to you know, use this uh, sub function, I need some x. Now I have the value of the x. I can uh, I can solve the I can solve the second stage problem. I call the second stage problem sub sub can be solved with, with, uh, with xk and if you can remember this is an example of the sub uh, it's going to give me a dictionary and from this dictionary uh, right now what i need is the value of y i'm following this guy the value of the y would be this He's going to solve the, uh, the sub first, then he's going to give me the value of the y. The y would be multiplied by c2. I'm following this guy, upper bound. I'm going to create the upper bound. And it should be it should be added by c1 times uh, xk. And this will be the upper bound of the problem. That's good. I'm doing good. I have the upper bound. I have the lower bound, and I can define the gap. The gap can be defined as upper bound minus lower bound divided by upper bound. And I'm going to use this print iteration function that I just defined. Uh, I want to know the iterations. I want to ask him also to give me the lower bound and to give me the upper bound and representing the gap. Then I'm going to tell computer, check the gap. If the gap is very small, for example, how much is a small gap? What about this? Is it small enough? Yeah, it looks good. If gap is a very small number, print ln. What he shall print, for example, let's say print 
congrats we are at optimality then you can stop because you know when we are the optimality why should we continue the iteration and uh, we can stop and end however if the gap is not very small we have to add the add uh, add uh, add optimality cuts and what is the formulation for the optimality cuts i would like to write them here so the formulation for the optimality cuts is theta should be greater or equal than theta k what do i mean by theta k is theta k represents the objective function value for the second stage problem then uh, minus lambda times a1 which is the coefficient of the x1 x minus x k so this is what will be uh, what will be uh, developed as optimality cuts so i'm saying opti no it's a bender cut huh let's call it bender cut equals to uh bender cut is a constraint is a constraint and this constraint should be attached to the main model this constraint says theta should be greater or equal than greater or equal to the sub problem theta k is the objective function of the uh, objective function of the sub problem at iteration k x k and of the sub problem i need the objective function minus again from the sub problem which is sub for x k i need to get the lambda right and let's also let me also uh, put the transpose here right then the lambda should be multiplied by a1 and a1 should be multiplied by x minus x k okay that's good we can also give some information to the user uh, by saying let's give some information to the user and tell him we are adding these this vendor cut which vendor cut this vendor cut and this looks good this looks good finally just you know to make it a bit more simple to differentiate between k and upper band and the lower band i'm just gonna say print ln k like let's say then i have lower bound lower bound then let's say here i have upper bound i guess this is you know uh, this space is too much lower bound lower bound upper bound and gap maybe this should be the gap and are we ready yeah i guess so let's run it and there's an error somewhere let me let me pause the video oh, this is ck i put ck this should be this should be xk Uh, another error. Give me a second. Let me find it out.
Oh my god, I forget to transpose these guys. Too many errors. Well, that's okay, it's coding. So, if you don't get errors, you are not really coding. And this is the result. So, you can see uh, I have the case. I have the lower band, upper band, and gap. I know the you know the spacing is not very good, but forget about that. And after four iterations, we get the optimality cut. This is the first optimality cut I have. This is the second cut, and this guy is the last cut. And there we go. We solved the problem.